Hello guys, it's Peter from PS Sound and Lee from Platinum in Car. There you go. So this is going to be a short one for you guys. We will have a few videos of this car, the secret project. Um, we just wanted to take a quick test for you so you can see how much a system like this with three-way front and rear fill and two 15s in IB truly drove. Because people always cry about how much battery power, how thick cables they need. So we are going to clamp this system don't consider it a super professional um, test. It's just quick. We don't have time because the client is coming very soon. But we try to find time to squeeze a quick test in. So you will see what this setup is drawing. So this is the point where we want to record this because I haven't done it. Well, I have done it, but never recorded, never showed it to anyone. People always complain about power consumption, thick cables, big fuses and all that crap. And in reality, when you play music, which is dynamic, you will never see those um, amp occurrence that normally people think. Like what we have the 150.6, that's 150 watts, six channel amp for the freeway up front. In reality, the tweeter and the mid will possibly draw what, 10, 20 watts, nothing more. The mid bass may draw more, you know, up to 50, 100 watts or normal listening levels. To take 150 watt out of that amp, those mid bases up front would crap out. Then we have the 400.2 underneath, uh, below that's running the subs in this car on four ohms. So we have 400 watts for each sub. And the system is, is tuned now pretty bass heavy because the client likes proper low end. So we are at 13.4 volts and it's, it's pretty solid all the way in the car. It's not moving. Um, this is the idle. 30, uh, sorry, 3.10. 3, 3 amps idle. And up to normal listening level. So the iPad is there, I can control it. Hit play. That's a ideal listening level for driving, for long distance driving. And you can see it's drawing, what? Five, six, Nothing more. Okay, we're going up. So that's 10, 12. Lee, pop in just for a second how loud it is. What do you think? So this is now 4, 6. 4, 4 6 amp. Uh, let's go back in the track. Oh. Okay, so now we go loud. Opa, okay. Martin Garrix, that has proper low end, that tune. So we are at like 70% on the volume scale. 30. In between 20 and 30 amp. And that is booming inside. Sobs move around three millimeter. Sixty-three was the peak I've seen with this tune, and I had to switch over to six hundred amp because on the. Uh, 40 amp scale, it went to tilt obviously, yeah. but to see more than 60, 80 amp on a freeway with a sub, or oh, we also have rear fill with a two channel amp, but that doesn't draw anything. It's, it's pretty impossible. My friend has two Helix Q12s in sealed, so the sealed boxes can draw with a 5k monoblock on half an ohm. And people would think, Jesus, you're gonna kill those subs, they can take 1K RMS. He's never seen more than 50, 60 amp drones for the subs on their own. The fact that you've got IB draws a lot less current as well. Yeah, they are very sensitive. Any, any they are definitely to make a move. very sensitive in there, that's for sure. Uh, that, that's as loud as uh, anybody would ever want a car, for sure. Well, not everyone. Some well, people want crazy bass. 
but it takes numbers, but this setup right now, the way it's sounding inside with the bass level, it's definitely producing more than healthy levels. It is not healthy for a long time listening. No. Yeah. I'm just trying to find okay, Ariana Grande. That has stupid stupid lows. So this is like 70% on the scale. loud and you know seven amp now without the sub seven eight amp for the front end okay there's no mid bass playing 17 50 on, on this track as well 50 odd amp peak but when it's, it's fluctuating front end may draw 10 15 um and then the sub takes a bit more juice subs are not pushed to the absolute edge that's for sure we could we could get more out of them but by then the system is so overpowered with the bass that it's not balanced it's it's just nonsense to listen to music like that and then when people want two three five kilowatt on bass the front end can't keep up Yes, then you build really loud front ends and then you have PA drivers or horns or whatever. Fair enough, it's a different game. But if you want to listen to music in quality... You can't sit in a car with, no. with that lot of... You that, ruin your ears. Horns at that, those levels. People were telling me that their front end does this and that DB level, just the front end. I measured the Honda 40 odd with crazy music, crazy uh, drum and bass. It was 118 peak with, with the fluctuating 112, 115. It's f***ing loud. You can't stay in there for long. Well, when I want to lose it, sometimes I do it. I, you know, in live sound engineering background, when I was doing events, sometimes, yeah, you had crazy levels, especially in small, small um, rooms where the drummer was doing 120 pluses. But then you went home and then your ears were ringing all night. So there you go. This is now four five six amp that's playing about 85 db at the moment maybe 90 before this is around 50 percent of the volume scale now and 14 amp the peak i've seen between 8 and 8 and 14 and that's pretty loud 20 hertz probably 70 percent of excursion of the subs 20 hertz pulling 18 amp and it's the panel the trim panel that's flexing now that's what you hear by the way and it's you know it's moving proper air the full door open so that's IB for you it's just sensitive 18 20 amp on 13 volts you do the counting how much power it takes to make those subs move to create those levels we don't have an spl meter with us but i know <coughs> from previous builds that two of these subs with this amount of power if you crank it on 20 hertz you can easily get close to 140 um and like 30 40 hertz you can do 135 138 if you really push them and that is more than enough for a front end i'm sure this this test could have been done better in a more scientific way giving more information to you guys, uh, checking everything else. But 
we only had this this short time and and, and this should give you a bit of insight into the the realistic um, power requirements for a system because as as i know most of my customers as well are lost are completely lost how much power they need um, of course it's it's a bit more important for those people who have big setups big bass who do sound quality loud or or crazy big bass systems uh, their power supply is possibly the most important thing it's more important than than what amplifiers to buy if you don't have enough power enough reserve to keep those amps on a stable voltage and and supply enough current then yeah you will have pretty bad results and most people always jump on buying big expensive amplifiers and, and their power supply sucks um, especially here in Europe it's difficult for people um, because we don't have big engines where you can fit big alternators or multiple alternators then then you have to rely on, on stock power but for sound quality it's just fine most new cars have at least 120 150 amp alternators and if you buy a good battery up front when the car runs you have enough power for easily one and a half kilowatt and that's that's enough that's enough because you could see that the front end doesn't draw as much as as people would think and then you have enough for bass as well if you have insensitive bass drivers in small boxes and you want it loud then then yeah you will have to pump big power into them and that's when uh, you can start to have voltage drop and problems then you can add a second battery close to the amplifiers to the back that's that's the easiest option i would do um after having a good front battery of course and then decent power run to the back then and then anything beyond that is 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 big big investment to be fair but um you could see that in this secret project right um it's an electric car you could see from previous videos and the power supply for sound quality is just as good as good as it can be because you have stable voltage it doesn't it doesn't drop it doesn't move and we don't know how far we could go uh, we were slightly worried about it because you don't want to test and then possibly cause a problem and then damage the dc dc converter if you can actually damage it because some of my friends who are more into this technology they said that it would only limit down and it wouldn't have any, any issue if you reach the limit, but I don't want to test it. Whether it's 150, 200 amps, who knows, and, and we don't know how much the, the car actually draws, because every car is designed for um, the car's consumption and actual reserve. What that reserve is depends on every single manufacturer. If, if you have 120, 150 amp alternator on a car, then your car can possibly draw 100 amp at maximum when you have everything running on it all the headlights all the aircon heater um, electric seats heated seats you name it when everything runs in a car then then you can have higher consumptions and then what you have left on the top of it that's your reserve for audio um, and and in electric cars as well not many people have built or tested how far they can push things um, but I think up to like 100 amp you shouldn't have any problem and and you could see that this car is loud with those two 15s as well and we could only see 60 62 amp maximum with music yes maybe if you play like rebased uh, crazy hip-hop uh, where everything is about bass and really long elongated bass notes so just constant draw and then you could possibly draw more I don't know that's not something that the customer is going to do or we would do or we would play um, you could possibly hit 80 amp um, but that's the beauty of ib ib applications and then you can go to description check out the link i added a link to uh, trunk ib and true ib installations and you can see what this ib madness is about why it's so sensitive how much power the, the subs require and and that's that's a great way to have an efficient system which requires less power so hopefully this this video was useful for you guys i'm sure that many clever people will say things about it but um all i can say buy a clam meter and then test it for yourself
and you will see how much you draw. When you see wattage drop on your uh, on your car, where you have alternators and batteries, if you see wattage drop, it means that you don't have enough enough supply and enough reserves in the batteries and in the alternator. Then you have to up the game. Yes, you can see a bit of a drop in voltage. That's that's common. If you go below 12.5, then I would start to worry. And when you have big base systems and you drop under 12 volts, that's the point when you really have to go deep in your pockets. And that should be the first thing to focus on to sort your voltage out. Then worry about spending extra money on speakers or amplifiers or anything else. Power supply is super important. Um, but yeah that's that's pretty much it so go to the description you can check the ib playlist as well there's one one video about uh, how much ib subwoofers uh draw how much power they require and it's explained pretty well hopefully that will give you a bit more help if you don't understand the ib application and um subscribe to the channel because then you won't miss the next interesting video and useful video and feel free to share it comment do the usual things and and hopefully you can you can also improve your system so see you on the next one and and have, have fun with your systems